thank you very much, Steve, and for that really deep prayer. Thank you so much, Dr. Mitchell. We brought this all together in this very special and sacred place. I have been leaning in another direction in terms of singing. Until I heard about the death of Harry Belafonte. And he has just been written since that announcement. May words of my mouth that follow from the meditation of my heart find favor. In the heart of God, the heart of the universe, and the hearts of those who gather here. Amen. She lay in bed with him, holding up his hand. When morning dawned, she awoke. He slept. This was my rendition of what I was told that the wife of her Belafonte expressed to one of our community members, uh, Dustin Porter, who spoke in our class, my class opposed to the Pacific School of the Death indeed has come to Harry Belafonte, and death is something that's going to come to each one of us. Howard Thurman wrote that a good death is made up of all the same elements as a good life. A good life is what a person does with the details of living. If he sees his life, as an instrument, a deliberate instrument in the hands of his life. Restraint sends all boundaries and all horizons. It is this beyond the dimension that saves the individual life from being swallowed by the tyranny of present needs, present hungers, and present threats. It is a place where life has long been accepted and yielded to, where the private has become infused with a great will. And certainly, Harry Belafonte had already, many years ago, willed his spirit to the great spirit and was addressing all the present hungers and present threats and present and beyond. And the beyond dimension is very important for us to understand. So it's certainly no surprise to me that Harry Belafonte is having a good death. For that extraordinary life, he took seriously our connection to each other and to the old. President, my president, Rabbi Abraham Joshua Kessler has said, a few are guilty, but maybe guilty, but all are responsible. All of us are responsible for our world as it exists. And therefore, each of us are called to employ our resources, our minds, our hearts, our spirits, even our financial and material resources to create a world of dignity and beauty, which uplifts and binds us all in sacred relationships. Yes. We all 
and resources that are needed. Every one of us. I did not include this in the written message, I mean, extensively, but I did talk a little bit about the fact that when I first met Harry Belafonte, it was when I was a sophomore in college, and he had come to Brown University in concert. I was actually as close to him as I am to Harry. Maybe even closer. But I was so amazed by the old lady that I didn't have the nerve to go and introduce myself to him. And I just came out of the school and I this is this. Oh, I wanted to. And I was afraid I could carry the weight <laughs> to my arm that I went to see him because he was such an extraordinary person. That's where he introduced that was true. Nipsey Russell was there also the comedian, and the performance was a beauty. I mean, I don't think I could have seen Belafonte as he in concert. He is just a beast. And how he pulls the community together. One of the things he did in the end of the concert, I think he's playing Matilda. Matilda. Uh, and so this pointed to somebody in the community. He picked up my good dog, then he pointed to somebody else, and she sang, she had a gorgeous voice. It's like she should have been on stage. With him. And it was just something like you really felt as though you were one. And it's just, just an amazing performance. Performance. But I want to go back to his work as civil rights leader. <laughs> And stated in Birmingham, the Birmingham campaign was very important for the civil rights movement. Going up against Bull Carter and Thomas Stafford's You might know, or maybe you don't, that Birmingham at that time was called Bombingham because of all the bombings of black churches, black homes. It was a serious place to try to bring about civil rights. And King had put together this Easter campaign. And on Monday, Thursday, that could be 300 people. There were 300 people who were still in jail as a result of the nonviolent campaign. The next day, Good Friday, 50 more people were supposed to join and present themselves to jail, along with Ralph David Abernathy. Martin Luther King. When the bad news came that the bailed person who would get people out of jail could no longer do that. The city said they no longer had sufficient resources. And so there's a bad thing. And he said, Here we are. And King had announced that I'm going to be with you. I'm going to be Friday. We're going to march and so on. The people were expecting that he's going to go to send himself to jail. He and Abernathy. And then this is the night before. And King's Lemma, they were doing all, what shall we do? And many of them said, well, you can't go to jail. Because you're the only person with the context and resources from possibly getting to bail. And was, you can't do that. So it was said that King can enter another room, the girl, the child, and put out his holy waters, which is a sign. So he did that, not knowing what would happen. In the meantime, Harry Belafonte was coming. Monday, the great thing happened. He raised fifty thousand dollars from nineteen sixty-three. Fifty thousand dollars to get people out of jail, and they needed more. He committed himself to raise more. King had described this as a very serious rule. 
what had happened in terms of <coughs> not having the money to get you out of jail threatened to ruin the whole movement. His own credibility was on the line because he had promised to go to demonstrate. And now in the same old day, I just stay out of the ratings of the kingdom. So my father was with these marching children of light in Birmingham. He stopped at the Reds. And Delafonte was able to help remove, or at least work around the obstacles on the James River. The mountain was not removed. But a way was found to go around it. Howard Thurman, if you have read his uh, autobiography, and if, even if you have, you might have heard it, he said that as a child, a little boy, when he was depressed and had problems or whatever. He go to his backyard, and in the backyard there was an oak tree. And he would go there as a kid and just lean his back against the tree and talk to the tree, tell the tree what was going on, and would rip out of his ears his disappointment, the trials, the anxiety, and so on. And he felt as though the tree was missing. Leave the tree to the front. My point is, he said, the tree, I'm saying this, the tree had done its job. And that's what Harry Belafonte was for the civil rights movement. He had Martin Luther King back. So at this time when Martin Luther King was saying, how do we go forward? This might destroy our movement. Belafonte And I'll have to We don't know what would have happened to the civil rights movement. There would have been a movement, I presume, if there had not been this elephant and others involved in support. Now, I had not seen before that Belafonte was also so intimately involved in the uh, 1963 March to Washington. Uh, I knew he was, I'd seen his picture flashed across there, but he was there and contacted all these artists, and he had best wishes from over 400 artists. Many of them saying we can't be there even physically, <laughs> and he just named a few, including Sidney Poitier, um, Alcy Davis, Ruby D, mm -hmm. Sammy Davis. The first name he gave was Mark, uh, Ronald Brando, uh, Gregory Peck, even Charles Preston, who survived. All these people who said that we're with you. It's good. Belafonte was for Dr. King, King's standards. Providing both practical and spiritual literal work. Remember that passage in Psalm 23 Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. That's what the Lafonte was. The king. So, this need for standing stones is really great today. As we continue to convert the human uplift, there are many detractors on our way, many distractions. Complacency and indifference immobilize the needed next step that we should take. Fear erodes our souls, backlash our moment of high resort. The connection between Dr. King and Harry Belafonte was a soul connection. Not only were they soul brothers, but they were also soul mates. 
Delafonte described their initial encounter. He said, he called and introduced himself over the phone. He said, you don't know me. We have never met, but my name is Martin Luther King Jr. And all I said that I was waiting for the joke because everybody knew who he was, but it wasn't a joke. He said, I am calling you because I think you might be of service to something I very much believe. Well, the father went to see him through the next day and called him at the church. And so afterward, they went downstairs in the basement and sat at the little card table that the women that used to use a bingo. And the king told them his mission. And the father said, we talked. Well, it was supposed to be her next. But it turned into nearly Two, this is what Belfonte is saying of King and of himself. He would not release me from his pain. He would not release me. And I would not be released. That's a spirit, it's an awesome spiritual time. Harry Belafonte was tutored in many ways by Paul Robeson. I remember once before he talked about the first time meeting as a child. My kid, I heard such a young person, Robeson. And they said, oh, what did you do? He said, I took him coffee. <laughs> That's what I did. You know, I'm out to the with this person, so I took coffee to him. And Robeson had very exacting standards for artists. He thought artists had a very special responsibility for the world, which we did at that. They were supposed to be these true talents. And he said, listen, artists are the gatekeepers of truth. They are civilization's radical voice. And they are every artist, every scientist, every writer must decide <laughs> now where he stands. The artist must take sides. He must fight, he must elect to fight for freedom or for slavery. I have made my choice. I have made my choice. So here in Genesis, no Fonte. I think of Ron as a very big thing and Karen was saying, no, we're going to sing a song that's not Beto. Mm -hmm. I know you're going to holler real and very good friends are going to sing Beto. They all and so, uh, and the sings that they like come and they want to go home. And it keeps on going. It says, work all night on a drink of rum. They like come and they want to go home. It's like the man to the morning coming. They like come and they want to go home. Come, fish the tally man, tally me the man. They like come and they want to go home. Come, Mr. Tallyman, Tally Banana. They like come and they want to go home. Always hear this 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 song says, you know, since you put it over here. But like, this is from the point of view of the worker. So you work all night doing the strangest work. We are being in this colonial situation. Time for us to go. Boss man, tally man, whoever, you come and look at our work. It's time for us to go. They like us have. Don't work us overtime. Give us our pay so we can go home and rest. Yes. Have our say. Brother Fonte said it's a song about struggle for black people and colonized white during the both rule. Well, I inserted in our message I sent out this interview with Harriet Belafonte. And I invite us to focus on these words. A group of young black students from Harvard 
just a few days ago, asked me, Frank, at this point in my life, I was looking for you. I said, what I've always been looking for. Where resides uh, the rebel? Without the rebellious heart, without people who understand that there is no sacrifice we can make that is too great to retrieve that which we lost. No sacrifice too great for us to reclaim to retrieve that which we have lost. We will forever be distracted with possessions and trinkets and titles. We got that in that response. We continue, and I think one of the big things that happened was when black people began to be anointed by the trinkets of this capitalistic society and began to become big time players heads of corporations, they became players in the game of our own demise. Let me make that plain, not only in terms of corporations, but government. Specifically, you appoint a person to the high court, Supreme Court, Clarence Thomas. Yes. <laughs> and he becomes an enemy of the people. Yes. No, I'm not proud of that black man on the Supreme Court. I'm disgusted that we had one with such reactionary intents. Carl, you said you know these trips about the Supreme Court. His wife is called the Bush administration. Take over the Capitol. And people would say, How oh, Dr. King must be proud of Oh, yeah, I know. <laughs> well, but how often are we sort of put in that position of wanting to get along, wanting the promotion? Wanting to receive the trinkets and the titles. Third assistant for bank affairs. <laughs> now we become players in their own democracy. Are there rebel hearts today? There must be rebel hearts somewhere. Yes. It cannot be that there are. He was an off, awesome presence among us. And we are beneficiaries of his remarkable contributions to our world. I haven't even mentioned his work with UNICEF, the fact that he organized a cultural boycott of artists and others against South Africa which played a significant role in ending apartheid. <laughs> Bill Fonte might not have known it consciously, but he assured Dr. King of the nearness of God, the nearness of help and resources that he needed in times of trouble. When it seemed that the forces of oppression were about to conquer, the forces of change. Lafonte was a human agent affirming that the God that had led King and the movement thus far had not and would not abandon them. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. When you pass through the fire, you will not. The things will not set you upwards from Isaiah 43 to I think.
no contact and right basis of information. I have worked not just the night shift, but many day and night shifts. Almost all of my 96 years. I have been worked. I have been offered. I have given and received. I have given my life to the movement of people trying to free themselves from oppression, to become the children of God that they really are. I tried night and day, shift after shift. So, come on, Mr. Tyler. God, the reality to whom I am a animal, come on, assess, assess my work. What has come from 